That's insane! Ah! That is so sick, dude! Look how Point fast that shit is! Electric truck they're trying to make now. Other stuff they're gonna mass. Bro, Marquez Brownlee has this car in this house? What the it's fuck, produced. really? So I guess what I'm trying to say is that Roadster is indefinitely delayed, which is a bit of a bummer. So I guess the SmackDown's gonna have to wait. Actually, wait, hold on. Hold that thought. No fucking way. Oh. It's, uh... A rematch? So this is the Rimats Nevera. What is this, like a fucking revamp Koenigsfeld or something? What's happening? What is, I've never heard of this before. And it is absolutely the smackdown of gasoline cars that we knew was eventually coming. You've been able to buy $1 million, $2 million, $3 million gas supercars for years now, but electric cars are, of course, newer and they're exploding. Why'd you say Koenigsfeld KW? Am I saying it wrong? Is that why you guys... Well, not Koenigsfeld, Koenigsegg. Oh, okay, whatever. Suck my dick. I don't know cars like that. It's Koenigsegg. Uh, shut up, nerds. My bad. I got, like, most of the fucking letters in the weird ass... Dude. Dude. Look at the name, okay? There's not enough... There's not enough normal sounds in it. It's not my fucking fault. Floating onto the scene. So now we get to see what an all out, technologically advanced, maximum performance, all electric hypercar. Chat worried about Koenig sex should, should be worried about having Koenig sex. <laughs> Good one. Actually looks like and feels like. Rimat says they've one sick. car before, the Rimat Concept 1. I was actually lucky enough to test that car too, that tiny little thing. They only made eight copies of that. Then they started working on the Rimat Concept 2 as they got acquired by Volkswagen Group and merged with Bugatti. So that Concept 2 became this Nevera, which they'll only make 150 of and will cost 2.4 million dollars. So oh dude, I'll get three. Easy. This isn't a completely different stratosphere than the promised Tesla Roadster. But the idea for all of them is the same. Just make the fastest car possible. And so... If Controversial opinion, but electric supercars are fun and all, but really stupid. One, because what, what is it going to go, 10 miles? Like, what the fuck are we doing here? And two... If it doesn't have an engine sound, if it does not have an engine sound, I don't fucking want it. I'm sorry. The saddest thing, the saddest thing about the Taycan, which as you guys know I have, I have a Taycan 4S, okay? It's wonderful. Love it. However, however, a couple things that I hate, about it one i feel like it looks too much like a spaceship still just like this fucking monstrosity does but this looks a lot cooler i do not like that there is no engine sound for the week that i had the panamera 911 or not 911 the panamera i realized that the fucking engine sound is so good Panamera looks so goofy. You just buy a 911. I can't buy a 911. I can't fit in a 911. I don't think you guys understand. I literally physically cannot fit inside of a 911. I've tried. I sat down in it. Yeah, America deserved 911 and so did Hassan. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. With this. Of course it's electric. You know those like scale of the universe videos on YouTube where the numbers you brother, you said take the Corvette pill? Yeah, dude. We're talking about a nine eleven and your counter to that is get a Corvette. Okay, dude. That's come on. It's like not even in the same it's not even the same class of vehicle, okay? You see, you see the scale of things get bigger and bigger until the numbers just don't even make sense anymore and they're not comprehensible by the human brain. That's this car. Zero to 60 miles an hour, 1.74 seconds. World record. Zero to 100 miles an hour 
in 3.2 seconds, world record. Quarter mile, 8.3 seconds, world record. Zero to 200 miles an hour in 10 seconds, what? world record. Bro, you go zero to 200 miles an hour in 10 seconds, and then the car's battery runs out. <laughs> the car's battery is so heavy <laughs> that it automatically, you're, you're juiced out. It's zero done. to 250 to zero in under 30 seconds. World record. There's, there's 23 world records on this list, and one of them is the record for most records broken in a day. These numbers don't really make any sense, so I need to feel this for myself. So, uh, track mode, the wing pops up, everything turns red. The funniest part about it is that when would you ever be able to go 250? Like, there is no, like, you could only do it on the track. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, there is no place. There's no real place where you could consistently hit that speed. The Autobahn would have, a, you would have a hard time, I feel like. Red, 100% front power, 100% rear power. Put on the brake, put on the gas. Three, two. How does it not fly? That's why the spoiler is so fucking big, dude. I feel like at that speed, you're just <laughs> flying up. See, you hear that? You hear that sound? Exactly. It fucking sucks dick, okay? That's my point. Imagine getting in a fucking car that just went to 200 like that, and the only sound you hear is, it sucks. Even worse, because, like, the Taycan does this sound. When you turn on the electric engine mode, the sound it makes is this, fucking awful. Oh my god. Oh wow. He nutted. Wow, I've never felt that. Dude, Marcus Brown Lee just broke his no fab rule. You know what I mean? He's like three weeks in. On my face. I he think just relaxed. I think we can do it even better. So let's do that quarter mile straight line one more time. But this time, next to me is going to be a very very fast car the porsche 911 turbo s that car does zero to 60 in under two and a half seconds oh. i'm gonna give that 640 horsepower all-wheel drive porsche a two second head start in a 400 yard race now let's see what this remats does to that very fast porsche <laughs> zero one That's insane! Ah! That is so sick, dude! Look how fast that shit is! Nothing is supposed to walk a car like that. I mean, this car is fast, but there you have it. This is a street legal electric car after all, though. So uh, around normal roads, how does it drive? So I'm, I'm driving in range mode right now, which by default is 100% front axle power, 30% rear axle, and the softest suspension and the least aggressive acceleration. The brakes are still really strong, but honestly, this is a very compliant car. That's one of these things that I think is inherently going to be better about all of these electric super- The fucking Tesla could never- Cars is they can be really, really soft and friendly despite having 2,000 horsepower available the second you want it. As I'm looking at the top, I have almost 100% battery and about 100 miles of range estimated. So <laughs> I just... Dude, 100 miles? Yeah, okay, dude. 
What a joke. This is what I mean. Okay, that's so dumb. It's in range mode, too. Come on, dude. That's what I'm talking about. There's no shot. Who the fuck would purchase this? Someone said gaming laptop. Literally, battery technology is like... Is ridiculous. More perspective, this car would be illegal to race on a drag strip. How much does a Taycan have? It's also bad. Taycan is like 230. You drive 200 miles at a time or something. Guys, please don't do this, okay? Please don't do this. Here's the problem, okay? First of all, a vehicle should be able to go a long-ass distance. But the problem with electric vehicles is that once you go 230 miles, you have to, one, find an electric charger somewhere, and two, the electric charger has to be fast enough. You're still sitting there with an with a internal combustion engine. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. You fill up the entire gas tank in maximum 10 fucking minutes. Okay? Like, at the very most, you go into a gas station, the paying process, because the fucking credit card thing never works on the, on the actual... Uh, on the actual pump, so you have to go inside, uh, wait in line maybe. Maximum, you're in and out. Yeah, 10 minutes if there's a wait. Electric vehicles, unfortunately, this dude, okay, this is my favorite type of chatter because, like, like, this is the type of chatter who's, like, so invested in debating me and proving me wrong that he said the credit card Thing always works. <laughs> Thanks, Schmelly. Like he said, the credit card machine in uh, on the pump always works. Like it, insane. Why was that guy so angry? I don't know. Assuming it's going to tell me that my range is low based on how I've driven in the past, and this car has not been babied, so. I guess that shouldn't shock me, but we are working with 120 kilowatt hour battery, so a pretty big battery, the quad motors, uh, and it will estimate, at least they say, about... You do charge a lot at home? Yeah, it's not an issue for me because I drive uh, every day and my drive distance is fairly limited and I usually have to like, I usually deplete my battery and have to charge every like five days. But the reality is that, um, I mean, I could charge it every day if I wanted to, but uh, ultimately, you know, if I wanted to go on a road trip, I can't take the take in, right? Marat did not install one charging station. He installed two. Take in has a lot of advantages. It's super fun to drive. It's definitely a treat. It feels great. Obviously, the disadvantage is Los Angeles potholes are devastating, and it's so low to the goddamn ground. But um, it's, it's great. It's a, it's a beautiful machine, right? And you feel it when you're driving it. I've never been like a car guy. I've never been like a big car guy. I drove my Camry who I, that I still have that I drive from time to time as well. But um, it's uh, you really do see how German engineering excels. About 300 miles of range on a full charge, which is pretty good. It has that CCS port right behind my head, and it'll charge from zero to 80 percent on a fast charger in 20 minutes. And then this is also a really there's a funny combination of parts. I talk a little bit in the uh, autofocus video about this car, about how they got bought by the Volkswagen group. They got a bunch of money into this company and they're merged. Chat, that's fast charging. 20 minutes is fast charging. Understand, EVs have a long way to go. Have you heard of hydrogen vehicles? I've heard of hydrogen vehicles. I don't know. Is it true that Japan is more invested in hydrogen rather than EV technology for cars like Toyota? Hydrogen vehicles. With Bugatti now. So it's Bugatti Rimettes. 
And there's a lot to this car that actually reminds me of Bugatti, where they clearly could have been lighter, uh, but they didn't. They went with high quality stuff everywhere. Basically everything in this car is either carbon fiber or metal and it is rock solid. There's not a ton of uh, dampening or like iso noise isolation. A real commie would drive the working man's car, the Ford F-150. First of all, I love trucks. I am too much of an Amerabu. I love trucks. I think Toyota Hilux is the greatest truck ever created. I think American trucks are grossly large. Way too fucking large. Hello. Hello, my love. The sweet princess. Um, the Ford F-150 electric sounds fucking awesome, though. I just wish that it wasn't that big. It's so gross, dude. It's so fucking large. I don't like how big it is. I think that... I think that it would be... I think that it would be way sicker if... American vehicle manufacturers focused more on Maverick style cars because like the Ford Maverick is also pretty large but at least it's like or the Ranger sorry not the Maverick the Ranger right isn't it the Ranger isn't that even smaller than the Maverick the Maverick is tiny no it's not dude dude let me tell you something okay you're you might be an American if you look at a fucking Ford Maverick and go, that's such a tiny truck. It's not. The Ranger now is what the F-150s were in the 90s. Yeah. Current Rangers are the size of the last gen F-150s. It's insane. Yeah. I'm, I want a tr like a Japanese truck size pickup truck. What's the point of a Ranger though? If you need towing capabilities for hay bales and whatnot, a Ranger couldn't do it. First of all, I mean, not everybody's fucking, not everybody's fucking towing hay bales, okay? And secondly, I'm pretty sure the Ranger also has uh, a pretty decent towing capability. I also do think that the uh, old school, what was it, El Camino style Australian vehicles that we've, is a, is a dying, is a lost art. Like, uh, what are they called? Utes. Like a like a sedan, but with a with a truck thing in behind it. Chevy four five four SS and El Caminos are sick. Food Chicanos no. I think El Caminos are sick, and I also think that I think uh, I think people forget how small the old Toyota Rangers and other trucks work. Just because we're always going bigger, yeah. A farmer near me started using a K truck out in his fields. I see it out here on my way to work. Yeah, the entire Japanese economy can fucking run on K-trucks. I don't know why Americans think any different. Like, what kind of towing are you engaging in? You know what I mean? How the fuck are they doing it? How, like, are other people just, like, doing multiple trips? What, what do you think is going on? A lot of these trucks already have enough towing capability for day-to-day -day activities, especially even in, like, uh, ranches and shit like that. The only reason why American uh, trucks are the size that they are is pure ego and uh, and because it just uh, it sells better. Most of the people, first of all, the Ford F-150 is the most popular vehicle in the United States of America. Do you honest to God think that every single person that purchased a Ford F-150 is purchasing it for the legitimate towing capabilities? No, fuck no. They just buy it because they're dickheads, Okay. Well, I mean, it is cool. Like, it is cool. If you like trucks, trucks are cool. But most bought car in the country, by the way, we aren't all towing. Yeah, exactly. Most people don't buy the F-150 because they need to tow. Those K-trucks cannot tow my triple 150 speedboat that I use 125 gallons a weekend to have fun with. ...or foam or anything like that. Like, I can hear the rocks, like, going through the wheel well. It feels like a relatively heavy but still compact sports car. I, I kind of like it. Also, one more thing I've noticed. Uh, so the dashboard of this car, the primary thing in the middle is the speed, and it actually changes the color based on the mode you're in. We'll get to the modes. But also, my uh, estimated range has been going up as I've been driving, so it knows I've been going slower. Kudos. But yeah, America does not have nearly as much industry as its amount of pickup trucks would indicate. No shot.
You would be, you'd think that America has like literally the entire planet's manufacturing and agricultural capabilities with the amount of fucking pickup trucks on the road. And also, it still does not change the reality that you do not need that large of a truck for the same towing capabilities. You do not need that. I'm a carpenter at an F-250 with a lumber rack and a commercial custom canopy swapped to a Ford Transit Connect, the small commercial van, and it's way nicer to work out of. Costs one-third of as much new and easily double the fuel mileage. Short tweet about it. 75% of truck owners use their truck for towing one time a year or less, meaning never. Nearly 70% of truck owners go off-road one time a year or less. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, my brother does off-roading regularly, and he does it with a fucking old-ass Cayenne, you know what I mean? You can do off-roading with any car, really. It's just a matter of uh, willpower and a little bit of engineering. <laughs> Yeah, willpower and clearance, baby. You cannot off-road with a Taycan. No amount of no amount of engineering is going to allow you to give it enough clearance. When you because I have to I find myself lifting it all the time. And and that is not it, it lifts it not even when the Taycan is lifted, it literally lifts it and it's still lower than a fucking Toyota Camry, okay? There's an off-road Taycan model. Yeah, you're talking about Safari 911s, which are super sick. It's not a Taycan, though, and it's not electric. Those are dope. Safaris are actually fire. Anyway, um, get back to Also, it shows my total power output and regen. The Dakar 911? On the side. When I hit the brake pedal, the regen number actually goes up. So that means they're adding regen before blending in the friction brakes. So it, it feels and drives like a normal car. It coasts mostly when I let off the accelerator, but it behaves a lot like Porsche's Taycan and that same 800 volt system, which means hitting the brakes starts with regen. There's a YouTuber named Bjorn Nyland that off-road his Tesla Model X and they use his GPS data to void his warranty. What the fuck? It's fucking insane. It's so weird when you what when you fucking purchase a car like they get to tell you you So I hate Teslas. Then adds friction brakes. It's clever. Even the infotainment is kind of interesting. It is a big touchscreen in the middle of the car. Interestingly, with uh, some storage behind it that you could just pull back to reveal. But there's a bunch of features. There's a 360 camera. There's a map. There's also a button on the steering wheel that has a little picture of like a voice control. When I press it, it says, this car is going to get voice commands and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with a software update. If it actually does get all those things and it's wireless, that would make this one of the best car infotainment systems of any hypercar I've ever seen. Uh, but as of right now, it doesn't have that, but you can still connect your phone and play Bluetooth music on the Focal speakers, which are all over the cabin. So I really think that in this transition or in this upcoming boost of all these electric cars, one of the most impressive things about them is the Jekyll and Hyde factor. The fact that these cars can have multiple personalities, obviously it's super cool and super aggressive and snarling to have a gas car that has a ton of power and sounds amazing all the time. I'm surrounded by those cars right now, you can't even see. But a really impressive electric car can be both really fast and performant and really soft. Audi is voiding your warranty if you floor your car. Oh, fuck. And docile and smooth. And I think this is one of those examples where just drive. Is there not a portable phone charger equivalent, but for car batteries? Brother, do you know how large car batteries are? Just think about it this way. A car, a car, an electric car could probably charge your phone for months, if not weeks, okay? Like, there is no, there is no 
way that you would do that. Yeah, unless you get like a gas battery. Oh my God, that's such a fun video idea. Yeah, a regular car battery is like 30 pounds. An electric car battery is like a thousand. Oh man, just saw perpetual motion in a Twitch chat. Hell yeah, Twitch plays quantum physics. Um, you getting a gas, getting a gas batter, getting a gas generator to power my car as I drive it. Someone did it already, huh? What if instead of a battery, we just put a gas generator directly in the car? Wait a minute. Yeah, sometimes it's actually taking advantage of the gas the generator, and then other times is is using electric, like uh, like a hybrid of the two. What could we call that? You think? I can't really think about it. I can't really think of a name for that sort of thing. <laughs> Geletric. Driving it around like normal, feels really soft and smooth. And if it goes into sport mode or cruise mode or track mode, well, it sort of puts a mask on. So I had to look it up to remember which is which, but the Dr. Jekyll guy, the nice guy, is just driving in range mode or cruise mode. All the gauges are blue and green and there's a smooth, soft throttle response, soft suspension. I do. I will say I love the console in this thing. I feel like a lot of electric vehicles have disgusting consoles. Another thing that I absolutely despise about Tesla's is its fucking console. It's so gross. It's so large. It's just a fucking fat-ass tablet. I hate it. I hate it. I also love that this car, despite being an electric car, looks not dissimilar to other supercars. Um, it doesn't have that, like, across-the-board spaceship feel to it, or at least not uh, any different than, like, a regular McLaren. Lighter steering. And the rear wing is all the way down at its lowest setting just to glide through the air with maximum efficiency and minimal drag. It's almost shockingly calm. You'd never know about all the horsepower underneath your foot. But with the soft steering and the regen braking, it feels and drives, I'm not even joking, just like a super low Tesla Model 3 with incredible brakes. But the Mr. Hyde is the evil one. And in this very same car, just by turning the knobs and going into sport mode or track mode and dialing up the power and everything turning yellow and red, you tighten up the steering, you stiffen the suspension, the throttle response from the pedal becomes much more linear with your foot. Like it's incredibly reactive, just touching the pedal. And the huge carbon fiber wing extends up and out into the air, completely nuking your rear visibility to create more downforce to keep you planted to the road, along with an active rear splitter down underneath to redirect air. Plus, if you're fast enough and hit the brakes hard enough, the wing will flip up and become an air brake to help you slow down even what? faster. This whole car basically tightens up even more than it already was around you and becomes a weapon of speed and precision. Bro, I've it's like, never it's felt like a, a plane, dude. It's like a land plane. Car where you have such direct and immediate control over exactly how fast you're going at any moment. More than the Plaid Model right. S, more than any gas car I've ever tried. The lag is just non-existent. It's pretty incredible. So anyway, I guess the point is, this is still that moment that we are waiting for for electric cars, even if it didn't come from Tesla. All those records that I was talking to you about before, those weren't electric car records. Those were production car world records. Everything this does in a straight line is faster than the Bugatti Chiron. Now, I feel like the number one comment I can- F-150 Lightning battery is so large they have the ability to reverse charge when plugged into a house. So when the power goes out, it can act as a backup battery for the house and will run for the will run the house for approximately three days. What the fuck? 
God damn, that's the most American shit I've ever heard. That sounds so sick. I can already see below this video is, oh, but I'd rather take the Chiron. I'd rather take any of the gas cars any day because of the noise and the soul and the fun of it. And I get that to an extent. Obviously, I agree with that. Though. Two million dollar exotic hypercar should have fun. It's way more about fun than practicality. So I understand that. But the point is the future of cars is now proven to be electrified in some way. The newest Corvette flagship is electrified. The newest Lamborghini flagship is electrified. The newest Ferrari flagship is electrified. The newest Bugatti coming up will be electrified. The new McLaren flagship to replace the P1 will be electrified. And that's what we've learned. So in the meantime, it was exciting getting to drive this one of 150 super rare expensive car. Shout Thank out to you, Triple F Chaos for God. letting me come out here and actually beat on this car and really drive it. It was incredible. Check out